Hello and welcome to your now online world music class. I have thought of the best way to make finishing this course possible was to provide these short lectures interspersed with musical examples and video to help you along with your reading and listening. I'm putting these into modules so that you can complete these on your own time and, uh, and we'll ask you to provide some short definitions and to turn in as homework to show you've been keeping up. Um, I was so very happy to have Alberto Armarsa with us in our last meeting. Alberto has also traveled the world, mostly by motorcycle, and he knows a great deal about the many cultures he has personally encountered. Uh, I'd like to re-emphasize a couple of key things he discussed, mostly regarding classical music versus fun. Western music is decidedly young compared to the other traditions we will study. Indian music in particular. Uh, one figure from this time in Western music who figured prominently was Johann Sebastian Bach, who was an organist and a composer in the 17th century. Much of his music was written for the church and in that regard was functional due to its use for the church mass. Bach was later rediscovered and now his music is performed for his own sake. We can call something classmeters. Firstly, it can only happen when the survival mode is over and humanity has more free time and can focus on making and developing music um, come written down. And in addition to that, schools begin to train and study music as a profession. Um, as I've mentioned, many other cultures have classical music. And as we discussed in class, um, India, Indonesia, Japan, Iraq, Pakistan, China, and just to name a few. And these have existed for many centuries. Indian music itself for 3,000 years. Around us, our text says mainly it was used in ceremonies and rituals, but it also includes background music, such as elevator music, sound nationalist music, such as national anthems and such. Okay. I'd like to talk to you now and to sort of get you... Uh, I have included in the module a nicely updated map that you can see a little more clearly than what's in the book. Um, India is a nation. It borders Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, China, Nepal, and Pakistan. And it shares its land, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and the Maldives. India is the second most populated country on the planet. It's a lot of people. 1.36 billion people, almost one-fifth of the world's population, live on the Indian quite diverse, with 2,000 ethnic groups, four major language families, and more than 120 languages of the Indians speak Hindi besides English, and both are the official languages in southern India, as the languages in northern India belong to a different subgroup than those of the southern. This origin of this goes back millennia, around 1500 BC, when an advanced civilization that lived in northwestern India was pushed south by a wave of invaders. That can be how the differences arose, with the invaders speaking one language and the indigenous inhabitants Geographical features, um, the Himalayas in the north, the highest peaks on Earth, was initiated approximately 50 to 60 million years ago when India's landmass collided with the enormous Eurasian plate. This impact created this immense mountain system we call the Himalayas. The Ganges um, is the long river that goes through India it's the long holy river of the Hindu people. The Sunda Bourbons is the world's largest coastal mangrove forest and is shared between Inglia, India and Bangladesh. It's located in a region at the mouth of the Ganges and the Brahmaputra rivers. Um, it is one of the most biologically productive and natural eco ecosystems on the planet and is considered to be one of the natural wonders of the world. The Tar Desert, located in the northwestern part of the Indian subcontinent, just north of it, um, very up close near Pakistan. Um, this desert, Sahara and the Arabian Desert, and it covers an area about the south. It's 
quite huge. Um, the Andaman Islands is a long stretched archipelago which expands over 1,000 kilometers north and sea south of Myanmar. Uh, we have lush tropical forests and they cover about 90% of this beautiful island's landscapes and they have a, a rich biodiversity there. Um, three major religions exist in, in, in India. Hinduism, which dates back to about 1500 BC when the northwest portion was invaded. Islam, Buddhism, and Jainism originated in India around 5 BC. Sikhism was founded much later in the 16th century, and there exists to this day uh, much political unrest, and this stems from tensions among these different religious groups, especially Hindus, Muslims, and Sikhs. Some of the many differences um, which may spur these kinds of interactions. Uh, the Hinduism has many gods, they promote vegetari vegetarianism, and they venerate the cow. Whereas Islam has one god, they allow the eating and killing of many animals, including cows. Um, Hindus and Muslims have formed bonds, which leads us to Sufism. It's a mystic form of Islam, and they share with Hinduism that music may serve as a path to communion with the divine Shafqat Ali Khan. And this, uh, the Shafqat Ali Khan is a musician. And this will be our playlist number two. If I can get that to work for us. Hold on, let me pause.